Thank you for taking this spiritual journey with us and with St. Ignatius Loyola, as captured by Marie Santana in this wonderful spiritual travelogue of photography. We begin with the same place everyone begins, the birth and baptism of St. Ignatius. St. Ignatius was most likely born in 1491, the 13th child in a family of minor nobility. The family was distinguished in the Basque country, possessed considerable land, and had contacts with the Castilian nobility. His baptismal names were Inigo Lopez, the first of these being the one most used until the name Ignatius began to appear. Who was Ignatius? He was a man of the world, pretentious, and very self-centered. It was all about him. In 1521, Ignatius was gravely wounded by a cannonball at the Battle of Pamplona with the French. That cannonball also meant that Ignatius failed in the dreams he had for his life. But God had a bigger dream for him, a dream of going out into the world, accompanied by Jesus, humble and poor. While in bed for about nine months recuperating from the cannonball, injuries to his legs, Ignatius experienced a conversion. Reading the lives of Jesus and the saints made him happy and aroused desires to do great things. Ignatius realized that these feelings were clues to God's direction for him. We see pictured here the former Loyola Castle. Today, the upper room of the Loyola Basilica, the room where he experienced his conversion. Pictured here is the pilgrimage map of his journey, a pilgrimage Ignatius took when he left Manresa, and ultimately he was destined for Jerusalem. In Manresa, Ignatius imposed rigorous penances on himself that would later affect his health for the rest of his life. Ignatius, in his life as a pilgrim and in his search for what he could do for God, went to the Virgin Mary to protect him always and to be the one who led him on the right path. Ignatius spent about a year in Manresa, where he helped many people get closer to God. He spent time in this cave, which today has been reformed into the International School of Ignatian Spirituality. Here we see the entrance to the cave. The ceiling, which depicts two angels holding the book of the spiritual exercises. The area of the cave transformed into a small chapel, which sits approximately 15 people. A daily mass is held at 7 a.m. for local worshipers. In his autobiography, St. Ignatius of Loyola wrote, quote, He sat down for a little while with his face to the river Cardinal, which was running deep. While he was seated there, the eyes of his understanding began to be opened. Though he did not see any vision, he understood and knew many things, both spiritual things and matters of faith and learning. And this was with so great an enlightenment that everything seemed new to him. It was as if he were a new man with a new intellect." End quote. This mystical experience or illumination on the banks of the Cardiner has always been viewed as a decisive moment in the life of Ignatius. It was the beginning of Ignatian mysticism, the inner presence of God everywhere, finding God in all things. Here is the image of the Cardiner from where he sat. Here is an image of the river from the opposite side. This is the cross of Tort, where Ignatius thanked God after the illumination. After his illumination at the Cardinal River, it was reported that Ignatius spent eight days in spiritual ecstasy. This important event depicted in the Chapel of the Rapture in the hospital of Santa Lucia, where Ignatius once lived and served, helped build the case for St. Ignatius's canonization. This is Santa Maria del Mar, the church where St. Ignatius begged for money to pay for his studies. During the years 1524 and 1525, Ignatius begged for money to support himself as a student, sitting on a step on a lateral chapel at the church of Santa Maria del Mar, one of the most outstanding examples of Catalonian Gothic architecture. 
This church was a source of stability in Ignatius' life during this time of transformation. Pictured here is the begging bowl, the original begging bowl, currently kept at the cave in Manresa as a relic. Here is a bronze statue of St. Ignatius in Barcelona. Pictured here is a street named after St. Ignatius in Barcelona. Here is the modern-day International School of Ignatian Spirituality, housing the original cave in Manresa. Pictured here is the bridge from the Cardona River to Colva Manresa. A salient mystical event took place at La Storta, when Ignatius and several of his companions were on their way to Rome to place themselves at the Pope's disposal. Pictured here, Pope Paul III in 1539 orally approves the society. On 15th of August, 1534, one of their number, Pierre Favre, said Mass in a chapel on the slopes of Montmartre where they all took vows of poverty and chastity and further promised that upon completion of their studies, they would make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. They agreed to meet in Venice to embark from there. On that day, the Society of Jesus was founded with those companions all as co-founders. Their great mission was now ahead of them. Pictured in these next three images are Ignatius's office in Rome. St. Ignatius died suffering the effects of a persistent disease of the stomach. The ex-courtier and soldier who had turned his gaze to another court and to a different battle had given his soul into the hands of God. Ignatius was beatified on July 27, 1609, and canonized by Pope Gregory XV on March 12, 1622, along with Francis Xavier. The Universal Church and the Jesuits celebrate the feast of St. Ignatius on July 31st, the day of his death. At the time of his death, the society numbered almost 1,000 men with houses and training colleges in Brazil, all of Europe, and Japan. Ignatius was always inclined to love. Indeed, it seemed that it was all about love, because he was loved by everyone universally. There was no one in the society who did not feel a great love for him and did not consider himself loved by him. Quote, his holiness, however, was not in those experiences, but in the great love that directed his life to do everything for the greater glory of God. A.M.D.G. Ad Maiorem Dei Gloriam. 